So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Johan, Johan Flitter, and um, I'm going to uh, spend a little bit of time with you in terms of um, capital health, and I'll be um, sharing some information with you in terms of um, production, reproduction, and then uh, community status and what we try and achieve in the herd health program. All right, so some of the slides I'm going to go through fairly quickly because I think it's common knowledge for a lot of you, but I just want to put it all into perspective and uh, just to show you how these things tie together. So I have a couple of key, cap I call them cattle key factors. So the first one obviously is natural resources. Okay, so that's surface and food. That's 80% of um, what you need. So we need natural resources, feed, feed abundance, um, we need a good normal breeding season. And then I've coined a term there that I call sensitive success periods. All right, so we'll um, browse through that a little bit. And then grouping actions, and of course, the whole goal of this exercise is to drive to profitability. Um, this wagon wheel basically is a summary of a number of the actions that you are doing in your cow herd. Um, from day to day, month to month, and to a 12-month cycle. All right, so we're going to spend too much time on that. You see a lot of actions that you need to do in the herd. So in any herd, it is, all, it is a good idea to have a herd health program. All right, and this, this is a chart, an example. I think there's actually one. If you turn your heads, that chart there on the back there, you're welcome to look behind you. Those of you who still can. All right. Um, when, you get, when you become older, then it becomes just muller, you know, you turn around. All right. So that's the actual size of that chart that you're seeing there on that wall. Right. And so it's empty at this stage. So with the Red Health Program, we start at empty. Okay. We're going to look at a couple of these um, parameters. We'll split the program, the action groups, we have months. Then you have uh, different sections in it. Vaccines, um, parasites, ectoparasites, endoparasites, certain other things like antibiotics, implants, microminerals that are applied and used in the herd. A little bit about breeding, that's not the focus for today. What I do want to point out is body condition score and conception, but also how body condition score plays a very, very important role in your herd health. Right. Then basic breeding guidelines, not too much about that. Nutrition, pasture management, I'm just mentioning those topics. And then the very last one on the right there says completed calendar. Okay, so sensitive periods, I, I call the sensitive periods in both the bull, the male animal and the female animal in a breeding herd, when certain things can happen to them which can reduce fertility, conception, Farming percentage. All right. Because that's the time when you will get, when your profitability will be determined, is what happens in that breeding period. Things like temperature reaction, semen quality, and um, bull fertility. And on the cow, there are the parameters for the cow as well. So the cow has sensitive periods as well. And those are the periods in the cow's um, reproduction cycle, especially when she's ovulating, when she's coming on heat conceiving, and then to keep her pregnant in that period. All right, so those are very sensitive periods because they have a direct outcome in terms of your uh, reproduction and your profitability. PI cars, we're not going to focus on DVD, bovine virus diarrhea today, but it's just another um, virus, another uh, pathogen, which can have an effect on these um, sensitive uh, periods and also on the profitability of your herd. In the bull, um, the sensitive periods that I think are very important is that period of zero to eight weeks before fertility tests. So why so far back as two months before that? Those of you who do bull testing, if your veterinarian comes out there and does bull testing and then gives you a feedback and says, well, of the 20 bulls or the five bulls, um, I think these three of the five or these seven of the 20 or whatever, they're not um, fertile. The fertility is low. So, is it one or two bulls? 
more than more. And certain things that we do can sometimes have an effect on that um, fertility. Sometimes temporary, and other times it can be longer acting. Um, then obviously the period when the bull is um, just before it goes in, um, both of those fertility and breeding, of course your um, trike and vibrio, you know that information, very important. And then the 0 to 12 weeks during the breeding period, very important as well. Certain things we don't want to do unnecessary in that period to have an effect on the uh, uh, semen quality. Right, so these are things that I think you need to always just keep in mind. Live virus vaccines, live blood vaccines, nutritional disturbances, of course, uh, heat, pH fluctuations in animals, uh, RP51, um, more specifically in female animals, not in bulls. We don't vaccinate bulls with RP51. Did you have a question? Sorry. Um, so you don't vaccinate bulls with RP51. Not with any brucella vaccine ever, ever, ever. Okay? So that is for females, but this is just in terms of sensitive causes for both females and males. All right. Um, so the RP51, you don't want to vaccinate pregnant cows. You don't want to vaccinate too close to the breeding um, period, okay? Because you're dealing with a live bacteria vaccine, which has the potential to cause an abortion if you apply it incorrectly. So you need to consult with your local vet. Alternatively, obviously, it being an MSD product, you're welcome to consult with us to guide you um, as to use it. You can use RB51, obviously, uh, in, a, in the heifers. You can start at three, four months of age. You can even vaccinate an adult cow with it, and you will not have false positive tests coming back from the lab. All right. The current brucellosis testing kits out there in the world are designed to pick up the field strains of brucellosis, and one of those strains, which is very similar to the field strains, is the S19 strain. And would you know, and if there are people here who don't know, S19, you may only apply during the first four to eight months of age. You may not give a booster thereafter, and you can't give a vaccine to a cow later when you're kind of scared because there's an outbreak around you. So RB51, you can give um, a booster, and you can use it two, three years later if you suddenly have an outbreak around you. But then you vaccinate the non-pregnant cows. All right, so I just wanted to focus on that. Uh, with this rain, Central Free State, Northwest, we're all sitting on edge waiting for the first case of Rift Valley fever okay, to, to come up. Because we know in the autumn, after good rains in that, in that area, that's often where Rift Valley um, pops up. But Rift Valley is much more an issue in sheep and goats, less in cattle, but it does also, it may also occur in cattle. Right? And that's a live vaccine or a dead vaccine. All right, so in terms of our um, calving ratio, we generally would like to have a 70-30 split. So the 70% arriving in month 1, 20 plus 10 in month 2, or and month 3. It depends on your breeding season. Some producers have got a bit of a longer breeding season, and others have a shorter one. So I thought for today, I just want to show you some interesting information. If you have a bull that's servicing the herd, or bulls, and you kind of have no breeding season, the natural phenomena that will happen out there is that most of the cows will conceive in a sort of a five month uh, period. Okay, when you're not applying management principles, when you're not boxing them into that. So you will generally find a five month breeding season. Um, this is just some literature that I took from the Northern Hemisphere just to illustrate some points here. So you'll see the number of calves born in the first month, the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth month. And I've just changed the dates to show you because in our environment, you'd have calves November, December, Jan, up to March being born. Those figures at the bottom are pounds, but I've converted some just to make it a little bit practical. I'll show you now. Then the ideal, the ideal, the ideal that you try and strive for is a 365 um, goal. So that's 365. So if you want to have that um, 365 day and not have cows drift out of your calendar and then go to your cull cow, you need to be able to get those cows pregnant in 80, 82 days, isn't it? Right. So in South Africa, it's not that easy for us always to achieve a two-month um, breeding season, 60 days, plus months. Okay. So 
if you go 80, 82, maybe even 90, you've got an eight-day drift, and over a couple of years, it does have an effect, and you might have a cow that you cull purely because it's gone out of the season. All right. Good. So, with having a shorter breeding season, we have um, less management issues. Now, if you think back on the first graph where I showed you, we've got five groups of calves arriving. So now, if you want to apply a herd health program, like vaccination, or blood, or whatever you want to start with the immune system, it means you've got to manage five, you've got to manage like five age groups. So if you want to now jab a calf, say um, a vaccine, and remember most of these diseases, even if they get them through the colostrum, <coughs> they start diminishing by about month two, by month three, this immune response from the mother wanes disappears. So you've got to start vaccinating some things at month three, other things at month four, five, and six. So now if you've got these calves in this group, it kind of means you, if it's something, a dead vaccine, you're going to go and jab those calves in month three. In month four you do there, but you do the ones that are now three months. And when they done that, every month for a couple of months, you kind of, so it becomes a very, very laborious task um, to do. That's why when you try, when you shorten it, even if you go from five to three months, you can apply your herd health vaccination program much better with less hassle. All right. Okay. We're going to discuss the rest. That is sort of uh, pretty um, easy to understand. So in the northern hemisphere, I've just taken this graph just to show you also the effect in terms of profitability. Taken those pounds, converted them to kilograms. So if you had heard that was carving in two over two months. Um, sorry for the, the light slides, but here on the left you can see them. So in this in this bunch, you have the firstborn calves way heavier, okay? Because they have a month more grazing by the time they are weaned, and they were weaned once. So 254 kgs, this is 246, uh, sorry, 227, and the average is 246 kilograms average. Okay. If you look at a five-month calving period, and so if you if you just think of that two months, how easy is it to vaccinate those calves to manage them? Much easier. You see, it's all you do it and it's over and done. Okay. In this instance, the figures, if you look at this, the interesting thing is that the running at the heaviest is 246. Um, the lightest 145. Those calves straggled over that season and eventually the tail enders are loaded off. They'll go to the backgrounding, to the feedlotting, and the small calves are not, they're not fully in. They immediately go to backgrounding and they spend another three, four, three, four months there trying to get that weight up from 145 up to 200, etc. All right. You see, their average weight is 218 kilograms. Good. <coughs> All right, so in a herd health program, just a summary, so what we do, what are the actions we'd like to do? We'd like to vaccinate, we'd like to take care of the ectoparasites, so the ectos, we'd like to take care of the endoparasites, um, then others, implants, uh, certain microminerals, then you have your breeding and your nutrition at the end of that. That's just that wheel again, right? And the chart. So how do we tackle this chart? This is whether you have it on that, or whether you have it on the Excel, on your phone, your laptop, whatever. You still have to kind of fill the, the boxes. So it's like an elephant, you do it little by little. First of all, there's a section on the chart which allows you to enter the information for your vaccine. Second section is your dip and dose, right? And the third one are antibiotics and implants and any other actions you need to do. And then there's a section where you can put in your breeding. So what do you need for breeding? You need sheep washing, um, uh, fertility. And obviously you have to do that in time because if you leave that till the last month before breeding and the infertile or you've got trichovibri on your herd or on your bulls, then you're not gonna make your breeding season. You're gonna run around trying to find your bull, clean bulls again, All right? And then nutrition obviously at the bottom. If we take the vaccine, so every section in, in this herd health program is broken up. So in here you will find there's a section for the calves and obviously for the heifers and replacing heifers and cows and bulls. And if you take this, you run it from top to bottom and eventually this um, empty sheet then becomes full. And so, yeah, we have a lot of products, okay? 
There are a lot of products that we carry. Gun, MSD doesn't have everything, but MSD, the company MSD um, has a pretty big basket of products in uh, the livestock market. And these are just some of the vaccines for ruminants. And there are three additionals. Then I'm going to spend at the end of this um, discussion, I'm going to quickly just touch on this specific vaccine called Bevilis. Uh, Bevilis um, uh, Vista and uh, once SQ. So, the, thank you for that. So, Bevilis Vista, once SQ. So, the once means it's a one vaccination. The SQ is basically subcutaneous. All right. There are other vaccines here which we'll touch on in a minute. Okay, so I want to just go back to body condition scoring because I'm I want to take you on a short on a journey. We all know what BCA stands for, body condition score. We all do it, and we all know it's a pretty it's a subjective uh, evaluation we do, all right? But in essence, it means the lower the body condition score is, more the skinnier, all right? And for reproduction in, in livestock, you want animals that are in good to very good condition. All right, contrary to popular belief in South Africa, I honestly believe that we, we are so scared of having difficult calving that we're inclined to run our cows on the leading side. Direct correlation between that, reconception, um, conception, calving percentage. And then what I'm driving to here, if you look at that, um, the white there, is a correlation between body condition scoring, calving, IgG, which is um, serum, which is the main immunoglobulin, the main one, there are others as well, but the main one that of those that are passed through the colostrum, which the calf must consume by approximately six, eight, maximally ten hours. Because after that period, the mother still has a lot of colostrum for a week, but the antibodies, and specifically IgG, cannot be absorbed by the gut anymore. It is broken down in the stomach, it's broken down into amino acids, and it's not absorbed as the antibody molecule. Okay. So the calf then destroys that antibody. So therefore it's important that the calf consumes that good quality colostrum in the first six to eight um, hours of life. Thereafter that becomes good quality protein. All right. That is charmed. So the interesting thing of this with body condition scoring is that we go one back again. If you look at the graph just where it says two, three, four, just divided by two, that's Northern America, Northern Hemisphere body condition scoring. So where it's two, it's a one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three body condition scoring. So when you have cows that are on the left side that are extremely thin, that are emaciated, or even in the middle, you can see there's a difference between the ITG levels. So this is a calf that suckled, and the next day, 24 hours later, its blood is drawn, and the IgG levels are determined to see how much of that is in the car. And so there's a variance, and that variance, and that's what the next slide basically illustrates, is that a car from a dam that has a low score, one and a half to two, um, has 20 to 14 percent less antibodies than, than for example, a car that, that's in a poor body condition score. Doesn't sound like a lot, does it? But it means, it, it can mean, you can interpret in whichever way. It can mean that one out of five calves didn't get an immune response. It can mean that one out of five calves um, had a little bit less than the others. All right. So one of the things that is very important in your herd health is body condition score, especially at the right time. And yes, if you do vaccinate a female animal in the first or the last month uh, before parturition, before calving or lambing, you will have a fairly high um, immune response. However, the trials that are done here are basically based on cows that are just vaccinated generally throughout the year. And what this illustrates is that the most important thing is not so much in this instance the time, but the body condition score. All right. Because at, at some stage it becomes very difficult to do a lot of vaccines in that last month. You have to vaccinate the cow in that last month. So you can do your vaccinations through the year. Certain ones like Salmonella and coronavirus and Rio, uh, um, 
uh, E. coli, salmonella bacteria, E. coli bacteria, rotavirus, coronavirus, those pathogens, those bugs. Um, yes, you will have some added effect if you do it like the month before. That's much more relevant in a dairy cow. In a beef herd, you don't have to um, do that. As long as you vaccinate that cow or that heifer in time and you make sure the body condition is scored, she will produce sufficient antibodies, okay, high quality antibodies that can be passed through to the offspring. Okay, so we start with that empty chart and just to show you how this part works, so if we just look, this section is just vaccine. And those little, um, those little green staticies, those asterisks or whatever, um, that's just the age of the calf in the herd. So if you follow that start, the calf is one month old here, the calf there is one month, two, three, four, five months. So that's the, old, the first, the oldest calves. All right. It shows you how they flow through the herd and their age by the time they're here in the 23, 24 uh, months of uh, age, age of uh, months of age and when they fall into the cow herd. So now we start populating that and what's on this chart, you won't see it in detail. Uh, you won't be able to see it very clearly, but it is the uh, things you should do and things that are kind of recommended. You can decide some of them you don't have to do, others you must do. All right. We start populating those uh, vaccines and there are a lot of vaccines that, um, that, that we push through. So in this first one to 11, from one until 11 months, we try and do very similar to what you do if you plant uh, apple trees. If you, yes, the other day I learned the word. Yeah, makes me feel welcome in the cell. Uh, I'm driving and one of my colleagues said, Max, now they're planting Max. Okay. So why, what is Max? And they said the macadamias. All right, so whether you're planting Max, with <laughs> Whether you're planting what, your maize, your grass, you've got preparation. And, and if you don't put in that, if you don't put in that attention in the young plant or the grass, what, what's the outcome going to be? Right. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we put tremendous focus into the young stock. We, we really push you, push you, push you to put a lot of focus into the young stock. It has tremendous advantages for you. Right. So that's why the first period is very busy. We put in every possible vaccine that we can and that we have. Because we say afterwards, oh, crack, I lost those three. Maybe I should have vaccinated for whatever. And I didn't. Okay. So we, we push you the cost of those vaccines compared to the return that you get on the animal is really um, very small, the, the, the expense ratio. All right. Then we push through. So you will see that's a full program. Okay. Going from starting at three months, starting even at one month, two months, with things like polygon, eye problems. All right. Vaccines for eye problems, Moraxella bovis. All right. So starting young, going through. But you'll notice that many of the vaccines kind of start kicking in here by about three months, three, four, five, six months is a lot. And then a couple, eight and 10, 11. And when we've gone through that, from there onwards, once a calf's gone through that introduction and booster program, they're off this just a maintenance, all right? Because that calf goes to your replacement there first, goes to your cows, is in your herd a long time. The other value is that when you vaccinate your calves, you do a preparation like this, your calves are healthy, the backgrounders, the feedlotters, they have their own little data, eight small or big databases, they know whose cattle are what. And so today, you're, compet you're competing with a guy who's not on your level, so he's competing with you who is on a higher level. All right, so that's in terms of health. Just before I move over on this one, one of the important diseases that w that we have a challenge with is still the respiratory um, sector. That means the lung health. And you can have a calf that has had pneumonia, you don't see it. And he manages it, but the minute they go through that weaning, shipping, transporting, auction, abattoir, direct, wherever, then that pneumonia kicks in. The feedlot guy then has, he vaccinates when they come in. Day one, two, three, re, re vaccinate three weeks later kind of concept. But the damage is already done. Then those are the calves that they lose. All right. They're losing two ways. They're losing death, direct mortalities. And secondly, they're losing weight growth. All right. Morbidities. They're poor doers and eventually they pull them at the end and they just slaughter them because they have, they have to keep the system going. Right. So that's where you can play a very important role in, in upping your health 
of your calves. You, first of all, for yourself, and secondarily for your client who's buying it from you. A high value product. Good. So we fill up our program. Now you'll also notice that wherever possible, we do try and um, we do try and put things together, like here, winning, uh, there. So wherever possible, we say let's try and do whatever we can as best as we can. Now you might say, oh, I'm putting a lot of needles into the cow. If you have done the preparing, the preparation of that calf at month four, five, six with your Clostridium vaccines, no? there are about ten of these related Clostridium bugs, causing rain, uh, causing nervous systems, okay, paralysis or tetanus, Clostridium tetany and botulism, and then the other Clostridiums causing the red gut. There are four or five of those, okay, uh, and then the Clostridiums that cause the the, the gangrenes. Uterus gangrene, uterine gangrene, uh, stomach gangrene, muscle gangrene. Okay, just in general um, terminology. If you've done that calf, if you've prepped that calf in this period here, you start your prepping, then it's just losing its immunity, you're vaccinating it, it's just before you start weaning it, you have much less of those things happening in the cold. Here, the calves were prepped at three months with a Respirovax vaccine, which is a dead virus vaccine meaning you can give it in the breeding season, no, no problems. No resorptions, no abortions, okay. All right, so that's an example. Good, so, parasites, we have pigs, lice, mice, flies, and maggots that we control, that's the normal, daily things we do. I'm gonna go through this very quickly, there's a very broad range there, you can see lots of products, different things. All right, so even for, so the next, part of the parasites, and once again, calves 0 to 6, 6 plus, 12 plus, cows and bulls. And then what do you position where? All right, and so you'll see the board fills up quickly, and these are products that you say, okay, this is kind of the time when you need to keep these in mind, all right? On your board, bull fertility, you have these issues, trike vibrio, uh, fertility itself, and then nutrition, um, there are different programs, okay, and there are two, two more um, experts here today as well. So this is just an example where this specific herd, uh, calf, calf tree feed was used, okay, and it depends where you are and, and the season, the amount of rain, Cal, uh, calf tree feed, and then, the th and then just licks that help growth of the female animal um, through that. Because once you wean, they're not your responsibility anymore. All right. Okay. So every every kilo the cow loses to up, you know, before say in the winter or poor feed, one kilo is roughly a day, all right, on good feed. So if a cow loses a lot of um, weight, it means X number of days that she's going to fall behind, unless she really steam her up and, and do a bit of catch up. Okay. So weight loss, breeding days loss, you know, it's directly correlated. So body condition score, re, uh, that's very important. And this, just, this is just a little graph that shows, or a table, that just shows the correlation between fat and, and body condition score. And if you take all that into consideration, those things are all correlated. From time of calving, the heat cycle versus body condition score, days post calving, so you know that. The lower the body condition score, the longer it takes or the lower the percentage of cows will come on heat after calving, right? So at 60 days after calving, those skinny cows at 1.1 to 2, 2.5, and even up to 3, you'll only get about a 46, 60 odd percent concept, a, a heat, cows coming on heat. And that doesn't mean it's 100 percent conception, all right? So that's why body condition score is very important. Once the condition improves, five, um, uh, say three and a half, four and a half, between two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, you can see it reaches a very high optimum figure. Your number of animals that have already come on heat at 60 days, 91%. At 90 days, you practically have had the whole herd been on heat once or more times. Okay. And remember from a herd health principle, the body condition score, you are putting in vaccines, it's money. You're pushing that. Body condition score is good. You're giving good quality colostrum over to your calves. Okay. So there are different tools for that. 
So for body condition score, I think there are four factors that I think are pretty um, important. Conception, reconception, the ICP, the intercalving period. Because you saw that in the slide or two behind, uh, before. The skinny, the intercalving period extent. And when that starts happening, you start going into the four, five months breeding cycle. All right. Um, then colostrum transfer is very, very important in terms of that. Just some pictures. You know, this is this is subjective. So one person will think that's uh, body condition three, or a, uh, uh, sorry, one, you know, um, uh, um, one and a half, for example. Okay. So our figure is two. So you just divide. There, our figure would be one and a half. Okay. The northern hemisphere, they work on double up. They go from one to nine. We go one to five body condition scoring. All right. So if you see the three there, there's the, there's the figure, one and a half, two, and where you evaluate, and it's subjective, but it gives you an idea of that cow and how she's going through her production cycle. Right, you've seen this slide, um, you see the relevance, you see that a calf that's born from a skinny cow has much less colostrum than one that's in good condition. Um, you've seen how the effect of so. When all this then starts coming together at the end to <coughs> drive to closure, um, this vaccine was launched last year. It's a, it's a very interesting vaccine. First of all, it's a once, once use only. It contains six components in it. it. Contains two bacteria, four viruses, the two pasteurellosis bacteria. The one is now called Manheimia mellifica. That is the Biggest killer of cattle in the feed industry, in the feedlots, okay, and even on farms. So, um, Anamia mellifica, Pasturella multicida, and then the four viruses. IBR, which is respiratory, but don't forget it's also reproductive, no? Right, can cause resorption and abortions, early and late. And then you have, um, uh, then you have the uh, BVD, bovine virus larvae, PI, viral influenza, bovine flu if you wish, and BRSV, another um, respiratory virus of cattle. So where do we position this and this? The interesting thing about this is because it contains a live virus component, IBR and BVD, but more predominantly the IBR. The IBR potentially in all live virus vaccines, this one and any other live virus vaccine out there on the market, has the potential to cause some deaths of um, embryos, okay, egg cells in the ovary before they even em embryo. So egg cells can be damaged in the ovary, meaning that those cows can skip a uh, cycle, for example. All right. So when we use this vaccine, when it comes into her the first time, we say you must make sure that you're vaccinated at least 30 days or more before the breeding season. And don't vaccinate it in breeding if a cow hasn't been vaccinated with it before. So the first year is your, is your only time that you say, okay, I need to start vaccinating the cows as they calve, all right? So you take the first calvers, week one, week two, week three, or week two, whatever, <coughs> um, and you vaccinate so that you have that approximately 30 days time to allow that virus to build an immunity. Okay, so that's where you put that in. I'm almost finished with this section now. So if you want to prime them in another way. There's a vaccine there called Prospirovax. You then use that, it's a dead vaccine. You can give it to bulls, you can give it to cows. There's no virus shedding with that. The calf that you vaccinated, infecting a cow, etc. All right, so whichever strategy you need to do, your vet could, should be knowledgeable about it. Alternatively, we're always there for, for help if you need to know um, regarding this information. Okay, so, you filled in all those um, blocks, and then at the end of that, you then have your year plan. And so to conclude, um, I think as far as I'm concerned, yeah, the most important person from the MSD perspective here yeah, is, is our sales agent who services you. So I don't know if you know who the guy is. Who is he? <laughs> who? Where is he? Where is he? Uh -huh. eh? Rainer, Rainer <laughs> Talbot. Please stand up so the people who don't know you can see him. Thank you. Uh, we assume you all know Rainer, but some of you are from different areas. All right. So Rainer services the livestock clients, 
um, from the MSV portfolio. All right, and they understand and know these things that we um, uh, transfer to the knowledge transfer. All right, so Rainer's name and telephone number, those of you don't know it, he's there, please get it. Um, and then to finish off any questions, I will be available afterwards. Um, and thank you very much for the time uh, to uh, have a bit of information transferred.